am so glad to be back up here in Alpena. I've been away for a couple weeks. I had to go down to Florida to help my mom out. She had surgery a couple weeks ago and was really just having a hard time getting around. And um, I bring that up for a couple reasons. One, because I've missed getting to see all of you, um, missed getting to see uh, my group in person and even just online and uh, getting to uh, be a part of this fellowship because I really do get so much out of it. Um, and also because my mom is one of my heroes and this is the start of our new unit about origin stories and um, about kind of being a hero. Uh, one of the reasons that my mom has always been a hero to me uh, maybe just because she takes care of me uh, but also because she has always been super strong, but also very self-assured. Uh, from a young age, she knew she wanted to be a nurse and she became a nurse and she worked as a nurse her whole life, which uh, everyone knows right now, especially um, how amazing of an occupation that can be. Um, but just being um, so sure of herself and really doing um, God's work, like what he had planned for her, I think she knew that at a young age. And um, this might come as a shocker to some of you, but I did not always know what I wanted to do when I was younger, and I was not as confident as that. So um, it really uh, made me appreciate her even more having that strong uh, woman in my life. Um, and it also brings to mind uh, a verse. It's actually one of my absolute favorite verses uh, and goes along really well with uh, kind of knowing your identity as a hero, which is what this unit's about. And that verse is Psalm 139, 14, which says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, uh, which God made each and all of us to be wonderfully made and to serve his purposes. So I hope that you can think about that a little bit as we go through these uh, next few units and just figuring out your own origin story. And I am so excited that we're getting back into meeting together in person. And I hope that uh, all of you can hook up with your group in some way, shape, or form. If you need any help with that, please reach out to um, one of the leaders or Pastor Colby and we can get you set up. I look forward to seeing all of you soon. I hope you have a good rest of the summer. Take care. One of the things that my wife and I really like to do and one of the things that, that I'm still grieving the loss of is going to movie theaters. Specifically, uh, Tori and I, we, we like to go and watch the Marvel movies. And, and we often do so even on opening night sometimes. We, we don't get into the costumes or, or do all the other things that some people who are really excited you know, do, but, but we do enjoy a good superhero movie. So into to make up some of our, our loss for not being able to, to access movie theaters right now, uh, Tori and I, we've, we've actually been kind of slowly re-watching a lot of the, the Marvel films on the Disney Plus app. And we just got to the, the movie Captain Marvel. Have any of you, have any of you seen that one before? Um, because if not, it's kind of interesting. It's a, it's a story that doesn't exactly fit or follow that same superhero formula uh, that we find in a lot of modern day superhero movies. Captain Marvel, or, or Carol Danvers, that's her real name, she is she's one of the most powerful superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Or she is at least one of the most powerful heroes that they've introduced so far into the cinematic universe, but, but she has superhuman strength. She can fly. She can catch a missile in thin air and redirect it to, to throw it at her enemies. She can, she can manipulate energy. She can shoot photon blasts out of her hand and she can even turn her entire body into something like a, a star and just burst through any object that she, she wants to pretty much. Again, she is a really, really powerful superhero. However, and, and at the beginning of her movie, she has no idea who she is. She cannot remember her past. 
She can't remember her family, and she can't even remember her own name. And, and because Carol Danvers, because she didn't know who she was, she didn't fully know what she had the power to do. Today, we are starting a brand new lesson series called Origin Story. That's because we think that you all have the potential to be heroes. And that is something that we're going to be unpacking over the course of, of the rest of this month. But, but we also believe that knowing our origin or what we have been made to become is important. And just like it was with, with Captain Marvel, we might not even fully realize the potential that we have until we dig a little bit deeper by considering what God has to say about us. Since every superhero has a backstory, <laughs> let's take a look at our backstory. It's actually the story of, of all of humanity. In, in the first chapter of Genesis, we have the story of creation. God created the universe and everything in it. He made everything with a purpose and an intricate detail. And on the last day of creation, God made humans. But what makes humans so distinct? How are they so different from other things like, like plants and animals? What makes us so special? Well, in, in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 27, we find out that, that humans were made in God's image. It says that, that God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And, and that's a big deal if you haven't caught on already. Humans were designed to resemble their creator. You were designed to resemble God. You were made to reflect God's goodness, his love, his rule, and his grace into the rest of the world. God made you and uniquely equipped you to accomplish this in a way that only you can do it. But then something happened. Not, not long after creating the world, God's creation, they decided that they did not have enough. And in Genesis 3, humanity fell into something called sin. That is, they rebelled against God and created a division between Him and His creation. They, they fractured their relationship with the Creator, and this had lasting and severe consequences. Death entered into the world. Pain entered into creation and sickness and plague and strife and starvation and discrimination and all evil things entered into God's good earth. But more than this, humans lost their free access to, to God himself. Their, their sin created a, a barrier between them and God, a, a barrier that they could not fix themselves no matter how much they tried. Sin now separates us from God, and we need somebody to save us from it. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Because here's another thing that sin does to us, even currently, even now. It distorts our view of our own selves. If we let it, it clouds our sense of self-worth. It, it makes us forget that we were originally made in God's image, important and, and unique. And it, and it makes us think that we are worthless, or we are unimportant, or that we're a waste of time. It doesn't let us properly embrace who God had made us to be. But that is not the end of the story. A, a hero does arrive, one sent to save humanity from their mistakes, and that hero, that hero was Jesus. God was not content to leave us in our own mess. Despite our sin and in spite of us not actually deserving to be saved in the first place, Jesus came and died so that all of us might have new life through his blood spilled. But, but not even death itself could keep this hero down. Uh, on the third day, Jesus rose again from the grave, declaring that all who accept him as Lord will in fact one day do the same. All who, profess, uh, all who profess allegiance to Jesus will experience new life with him in his kingdom. But that new life, it, it's, it's not just a future thing. Did you know that? Check this out. This is, this is 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verses 17 through 21. They say, 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, through Jesus, our identities are transformed. Through Jesus, we, we move from the realm of death over to the realm of, of life. We, we move from the, the realm of old over to the realm of, of new. And, and now we have been given the responsibility to be his ambassadors here and now. We have been given the important duty of, of working towards reconciliation. In other words, in Jesus, we have been retasked and we have been re-equipped to become those heroes that God has uniquely designed us to be. But back to Captain Marvel. If, if you've seen that movie, you know that the, the farther and farther along things go, the, the more and more Carol Danvers remembers about her past. She, she remembers that an experimental light speed engine had exploded and her body had absorbed the energy from it. She, she remembers that, that she was in the Air Force and that she had been trained in a lot of uh, special skills. And, and she also remembers how to access more of her superhuman powers too. And, and because of that, because of all of that, Carol Danvers, she commits herself to, to fighting evil and she takes up that mantle of Captain Marvel. She becomes a hero. But let me ask you this. If you know Jesus as your Savior, and, and, if, and if you realize that God has both uniquely called you and, and made you in His image, have you committed to that which He has called you and uniquely equipped you to do? Have you embraced who you really are? Because, you know, you are valuable. You are important. You are unique. And, and Jesus wants to use you, specifically you, to do heroic things in this world. Well, we'll talk about what we mean by heroic in the next couple of weeks. But to close, I want to say this again. Jesus wants to use you to do heroic things in this world. Will you accept his calling? Hey, it's Colby again. I, I hope you all had a, a really fun and, and safe 4th of July weekend this past weekend. And I also hope you all are, are very excited for some of our upcoming summer access events. So, so grab your calendars or your phones or your, or your parent because here is the dates and times for these upcoming events once again. On, on July 15th, from 6 to 8.30, we are going to be going over to Leeds Mini Golf and everybody is invited. We, we'd love to see you as, as we play some um, social distancing style mini golf and, and we also you know, plan on maybe hanging out at the beach right next door too. So, so if, if time permits, we're gonna be also mini golfing and hanging out at the beach. Uh, but then on August the 14th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. we are going to be hosting our very first River Games and that's going to be here at the church. So, so come prepared to, to get challenged, to kayak, to eat some good food and there's going to be some potential surprises there too. So this is something that you are going to want to make sure you're there for. So be excited and, and be ready. But I hope you all are well. And I will either see you in person or next week in this video format, you know, once again. See ya. Bye.